let's check uh, diodes and uh, LEDs quickly. So I'll take this out, a little proto board I'm working on, a little power supply. And so we can connect these up, just make it a little easier. And go over to this position. And this is a simple uh, one amp, uh, I think it's a one in 407, one amp, 1000 volt PIV rectifier diode. Uh, the band is, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's on this side. So I'll connect it here in the forward bias direction. And you can see we're reading the uh, barrier voltage there, 0.516, so obviously silicon diode. Let's check out the uh, LED, see if it has a capability of enough open circuit voltage to measure that. So again, I'm going to go ahead and bias it in the forward conduction. And yes, it can read that. Even, it might be hard to see, but it is turning on the LED. I'm pretty sure you can make that out on the video. So it actually has a little enough current to even light it up, and it's telling me the forward voltage drop of the LED is uh, 1.58 volts approximately. Real handy when you want to compute out your uh, series limiting resistors. And uh, since the chemical composition for different colored LEDs is different, you have different forward uh, drops. Uh, here's a green LED, and we can connect it up in its forward bias. It also lights up and it reads um, slightly higher. Some can go quite a bit higher, so it's 1.78 volts. Uh, this meter has an open circuit test voltage in this mode at 3.2 volts um, at, I think, about 0.4 milliamps, if I remember correctly. Let me just double check that really quickly. Uh, yeah, 0.4 milliamps. So it does light them up, um, and you could go up to uh, much higher voltages to check uh, the forward voltage. And then in reverse, of course, it should be OL, hopefully. <laughs> And we can also measure a DC voltage and vary it just so you can see the um, update of the auto ranging. And also, uh, there is a 42 segment uh, bar graph that runs across here. And it says it can have a maximum response rate of 60 times a second, which seems uh, extremely high. <laughs> um, so we can just hook this up. And for example, just dial up a voltage. So there's uh, 14. Uh, 0.5 volts approximately. Again, if you remember, this does have the 5,000 count, so you can pick up, oh, excuse me, 500,000 count, so you can pick up an extra digit if you like. Uh, so I'm clicking back here. You can see the bar graph, maybe. It might be pretty difficult to make out. That's one thing I don't, not real impressed with is there are awful small markings on there. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll zoom in on that, try to get you a little bit better shot of it. So hopefully that's a little bit closer for you, so you might be able to see the, the tick marks down here a little bit better. Uh, notice it's scaled uh, from a 0 to a 5 because uh, it's a 50,000 or 500,000 count, uh, depending on which uh, mode you selected. Again, I, to me this is sort of a negative. Uh, the bezel uh, that runs around here is covering it up a little bit. If, if you notice, if I tilt it up, you can see, see it a little bit better. I wish this thing was placed higher up on the display so that you, you had larger tick marks. Um, what I'll do now is adjust it so you can see it uh, change, if, and I'll crank it up and down very quickly. You can hear the clicking of the relays on the power supply, and you can definitely see it's uh, very responsive. And if I turn it way down, say, to a much lower voltage, uh, auto ranging there seems to be uh, one to two seconds, so again, uh, pretty quick. Okay, on this uh, setup, just want to take a little closer look at AC waveforms. So uh, basically we have an arbitrary function generator. We have an output coming through here, going up to the oscilloscope so we can see that waveform. Um, and then it's a simple T here, still using a coaxial test cable into the meter. And this is a dual banana to a BNC connector. And ground right there with the ground ridge, so just kind of hook that up. Ground to common, plug it in. And we could set this up, say for example, I uh, would like a sine wave, and we would set up uh, one kilohertz. Set the amplitude to say a one volt RMS. And then we would enable the output. Um, I have an attenuator not connected, and that's intentional for just a second. 
And you can see we're reading um, 1.9, approximately 2 volts there. And do an auto setup. And there's our sine wave that we can see. And it says that it's an RMS value of about 2 volts, 10 degree with the meter. Uh, function error is saying 1 volt. And the reason is the output uh, impedance this thing wants to see, it's, um, you can adjust it, but it's set at 50 ohms. Cabling's all 50 ohms. This is really high Z, so we're missing a 50 ohm load. So we can just use the feed through. Like this, and reconnect it. And since the output means so the generator is 50 ohms, that's a 50 ohm load, uh, your voltage will drop in half. And now we see that everything's in pretty much agreement uh, with the two. The uh, nice thing now, of course, is we can uh, vary the frequency uh, and see if it's still uh, pretty stable. The generator's uh, got a pretty uh, flat output. So if we uh, come along into here and go back to frequency, I can just start dialing. If I turn each one, that'll be 2 kilohertz and so on. I can just rotate it up here. So um, again, for audio, 20, 20,000. So there it's 0.95, back to our reference of 1K. is uh, 0.98 and uh, percent error there we can compute seems to be pretty pretty good and that's important to me because I like to uh, play around with audio and we can keep going up and just seeing where it would finally fall off noticeably so there's 20k um, still pretty good 40k um, still going up uh, getting up close to 100k. And there, of course, we can see it's starting to, to go up quite a bit. It's actually raising the output voltage. Uh, we could uh, go crazy with it. For example, we could say, I uh, wonder what will happen at 1 meg. Um, and <laughs> not reading up at that frequency. And here we are back to um, 1 kilohertz. And again, sine wave. And just to kind of check out the true RMS, uh, this unit will put out also one volt RMS at a square wave. So if we click it, we can see over in the scope display, we've got a square wave. And we can see the uh, meter didn't vary hardly at all. Uh, we can do a ramp. This is 50%, so it'll be a triangular wave. And we see a triangular wave, still very good. So definitely a true RMS uh, meter. Okay, let's see how well it uh, works uh, measuring a dBm. So we'll go over here to the uh, selection. If you notice, we're on the AC volts here. So pressing the selection button once will show you the impedance it's set for 50 ohms. Just stays for a second. And you can change that through 20 selectable uh, one, uh, different impedances or loads. And we're reading 12.91 uh, uh, dBm. And so I could go over and um, adjust the uh, generator just to confirm that. So we're on sine wave, choose amplitude. Um, let's set it up for 10 dBm. So put in one zero and then press the dBm key. And it's saying it's outputting 10 dBm and we're reading 9.89. Um, I've checked the tolerances, that's really good. And again, also the accuracy of the meter, uh, the generator, excuse me, what it might put out. Uh, this meter can do uh, AC plus DC, and so to take a look at that, you can see I've uh, zoomed in on the generator, and we're at one kilohertz, and I set up a um, sine wave, and its RMS amplitude is one volt, okay. and then I've added a DC offset, which in a lot of electronic equipment could happen all the time for biasing and everything else, and so the offset I've just arbitrarily set up for two volts DC. So basically what we have is we have a sine wave um, riding on top of a 2 volt DC offset. Okay. So if we uh, then go and take a look at the uh, oscilloscope, I'll zoom in on that for you. And uh, here's the oscilloscope showing the actual output waveform. So here's our 1 kilohertz sine wave. I've set up a marker here. We have this is the actual ground position. And there's a, the sine wave is not centered around ground. It has been offset by uh, 2 volts. It's um, 500 millivolts per centimeter or division. So there's 1 volt and there's 2 volts right there. So this sine wave has been lifted up by an offset voltage. 
and therefore the, it's undulating around this alternating current, which is not really changing direction, it's all positive, but it's changing magnitude. And there's an equation to compute the uh, RMS value of that total, which is uh, squaring each individual component, adding them together, and taking the square root. And uh, this is really nice, this oscilloscope can actually compute that. So the armist value of this complex waveform of a sine wave with a DC offset is uh, 2.23 volts. And I've, of course we have it connected to the um, meter, so we can go over and slide over and take a look at the meter. And we can see it's reading uh, 2.21 volts, which uh, is probably uh, very close to the actual value, more so than the oscilloscope. And the way that we did this was uh, down here you can see that we have a DC plus AC little indicator. And it was done by the selector. If you notice the enunciator up here, it's showing uh, it's measuring both DC and AC. And you just cycle through that. So you can there you're just going to measure the DC. Remember it was 2 volts DC offset. And there's the DC and AC signal, which is the complex uh, sum of the two waveforms.